Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Gay from Scratch, and uh, happy holidays, everybody. I hope you're having a good holiday. Uh, it's right now. It's Christmas Eve as I'm recording this, so if you're watching this today or tomorrow, Merry Christmas if you celebrate. And uh, what I decided to do, since there's not any news going on this time of year, is to look back at what happened over the course of 2019. I will link the uh, the list of links down below, so if you want to learn more about these stories, you can. But we're going to jump through some of the major stories that happened in 2019. Now we're going to gloss over a couple of things. You've got things like Unity and Unreal Engine, Max, Maya. They all do multiple releases through the year. I'm going to kind of skip over those particular details, but without further ado, let us jump in. Now, the first news story we had in the year, and these are all in chronological order, by the way, is that the Corona 2D Lua powered game engine went open source. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely a nice development there. I, I think they're struggling a bit to stay relevant, if I'm honest, but, uh, you know, a move to open source is definitely nice. The downside is it is the GNU uh, GPL v3 license, which is very limited in what you can do to a certain degree. Uh, but you know, it's better than no license for sure. So that was one of the things to start the year. And then next up, we had a bit of a drama. Um, is well, Unity were kind of pricks this year at certain times, and they kind of got into a squabble with Improbable. And Improbable told all of its users, hey guys, sorry, but uh, our Spatial OX online product, yeah, you're, you're kind of screwed if you use the Unity game engine. And it turned out they went back and forth on this, and ultimately it was resolved, but there was like a retroactive rewriting of of the EULA by Unity to prevent this kind of stuff. And that really kind of came across pretty shady. It was kind of not a great chapter for Unity this year, but in the end, improbable as it is, it was resolved. Uh, so next up, we have the news that everyone loved this year. I, I think uh, hopefully the sarcasm is dripping off my voice. Uh, Adobe acquired Algorithmic. Now, Algorithmic make two of the most popular uh, texturing programs out there. They make substance uh, Painter and Substance Designer, excellent tools for creating and applying uh, PBR-based textures uh, to your 3D models and 3D worlds, and uh, Adobe bought them. Now, you might be thinking, oh, great, this means my existing Photoshop uh, Creative Cloud license gets me a copy of uh, Algorithmic for free. Yeah, no, it doesn't. No, you still have to pay for it. Oh, and speaking of paying for it, uh, later in the year, they also got rid of their subscription options unless you buy it in the indie version on Steam. Yeah, so this, this acquisition turned out just about as crap as everybody thought it would. So, yeah, there is that. However, on the flip side, uh, we have a company called Quixel. Quixel is known for mega scans, and they also um, released something called Mixer. Now, I did a hands-on with Mixer. Uh, it's available as a free beta. A little spoiler alert, there is more Quixel news in the future. But basically, as far as a direct competitor to Substance, is, um, Quixel is probably it, or working towards it. So Mixer was just created this year, and it has a procedural workflow for creating um, materials and textures and so on, uh, and it has come a long way throughout the year. Plus, like I said, there's some spoiler alert news coming up. Um, so if you're looking for something to do along the same lines as um, Substance Designer, this is one of the closest tools you can get to it, and it was released in beta early this year. All right, so next up, uh, we have, okay, so this is the one release I am going to talk about game engine wise. Uh, Godot 3.1 was released this year. There's a ton of new features and functions in this guy. Um, OpenGL ES2 render was returned. Optional typing was added to GD script. Uh, better 2D editor, tile set editor, uh, C sharp improvements across the board. Um, there's a whole bunch in this actual release. And unfortunately, I was hoping that Godot 3.2 would have also been released by this time. But it's in like beta or release candidate 4. It's so darn close, but it didn't make the list. So this was the only major release of the Godot game engine this year, but there was a ton of features and functionality in it. And this was pretty early on in this year at this point. So um, 3.2 has been under development for quite some time. All right, so that was a release there. And the next one we had is GDC happen. And at GDC, there was one really common theme between everybody and that was a real-time ray tracing so there was a couple of announcements uh, Crytek announced their neon noir demo spoiler alert there'll be more about that in the future uh, that was ray tracing without requiring RTX hardware unity also showed that they were going to be getting into the real-time ray tracing but it's going to be uh, dependent on the HDRP or the high definition render pipeline which will come at some point in the future also unreal engine had it available at 4.22 so they actually won the race for sure and on top of that, NVIDIA demonstrated a couple more of their uh, things, as well as uh, and they announced that DXR driver support will be shipping in April to older GPUs, such as the 1060, 1070, and 1080 cards. Now, I don't know if that ever actually happened, to be honest, but they announced it. Um, 
Speaking of GDC, Unity made a number of announcements there, so I'm not getting into the, the official Unity stuff that happened through this year, not the individual releases, but I will talk about their GDC stuff. So we got a ton of things coming in here. I got Game Foundations, a preset um, system common to mobile games, no need to apply for early, oh, you need to apply to get into that. Uh, AR Foundations for augmented reality, uh, the Unity Burst Compiler, which is actually by this point in time fully available and actually ready for um, usage in the world. And the Unity Mega Sample uh, assets were released, 7.1 gigabyte download, it was huge. They also announced that they were in partnership with Unity uh, with Havoc for Havoc Physics. So we've got a lot that happened this year with the Unity game engine. Uh, Unity uh, Lightweight Render Pipeline, is out of testing and is now considered ready for production. It is now called the Universal Render Pipeline. Uh, the HD Render Pipeline is still a work in progress and the entire DOTS or Data Oriented Technology stack through the year um, it's mostly ready for prime time now as well. Although basically you now have two game engines in one. You have C Sharp like Mono Behavior C Sharp and then you have C Sharp um, DOTS. C sharp and they're not really that compatible, but they are making some translation layers to automatically convert from game objects and mono behavior over to dots. Now dots should give you uh, better performance, better scaling, multi GPU support or multi CPU support and that kind of stuff. But if you want to watch a recap of their GDC conference shrunk, shrunk down to 12 minutes, I did do that. Now speaking of GDC, Unreal obviously was there as well, and Unreal had a number of investments going on. Uh, sorry, a number of announcements going on, including one that was huge and is going to feature in later news in this actual roundup is the Mega Grants program. They said that they're going to be giving away $100 million to Unreal users, to st uh, students, educators, tool developers, and so on. Um, so a huge amount of money will be given away by uh, Epic Games. And frankly, we've seen some of that, as you will see in a few minutes. They got their new physics system called the Chaos, Chaos Physics. They launched their online services and then actually delayed them through the year as well. The online services are actually completely free. So if you need things like matchmaking, uh, in-app purchase, online, uh, social communication between players and so on. You can actually use online services for that. And then we've got the Epic Game Store, which made everyone so happy. Now this technically launched the end of last year, uh, and this has been a controversial move. Personally, I don't really care, but they paid for exclusives and that really kind of got some people's backs up. But they also really kind of went all in, is that for developers, there was a 12% commission instead of the 30% you would pay on Steam. On top of that, they also, um, take your Unreal Engine licensing costs, so that 5% royalty you gotta pay to use Unreal Engine, and it is paid out of that 12%. So if you are working on an Unreal Engine game and you're looking for a store to sell it, it is really hard to beat the Epic Game Store in that regard. And once again, in under 12 minutes, I did a roundup of their GDC conference as well. So I will have a link again with all of these stories in the link down below. So if you wanna see either of those GDC recaps, you can. But those kind of those two things kind of set the tone for what was coming in the year um, between Unity and Unreal Engine announcements. Basically through the year, they've just been shaping those new features up into production ready state. And then as I kind of foreshadowed of that $100 million they set aside in that mega grants program, they gave $1.2 million to Blender, which is pretty awesome. Now, I also didn't cover these in terms of stories, uh, but they also gave to Krita just like a few days ago. Uh, they gave to Dust3D and Lutris. So a, a couple of open source projects are really benefiting from this money, but nobody has gotten anywhere close to what um, Blender received with their $1.2 million grant. Now, speaking of which, Blender had a banner year, and I didn't get into each and every one of these stories, but they picked up some pretty major sponsors. So they got Epic Games here. Uh, AMD came on board, and Nvidia came on board, uh, Ubisoft came on board. It was a huge year for Blender, the Blender Foundation. Uh, it, things really proceeded well from the Blender perspective and they're very well funded as of the end of this year. Um, App Game Kit Studio was released. This is a Vulcan powered cross-platform 2D game engine fully integrated. I actually did a step-by-step -step tutorial on getting started with this guy. Uh, basically, they, they took the underlying App Game Kit and they built a, a 2D framework game engine on top of it. So if you're interested in checking that out, I have done on Dev Game a step-by-step -step tutorial as well as a video on getting up to speed with App Game Studio. But that's a brand new game engine this year. Uh, next up, we got Blender 2.80 released. Now this was a huge release, uh, four years in development, the biggest release ever. Uh, they actually finally you know, acknowledged to the rest of the world that yeah, their UI was a bit crap in places and they fixed a lot of those things. But on top of that, they have the new EV real-time renderer, 
which was kind of amazing. Uh, Grease Pencil uh, became this powerful 2D animation suite. Uh, it, it just kind of keeps going and going and going what was in there, but the huge new UI, EV real-time renderer, and the 2D uh, grease pencil functionality are probably the highlights of this particular release. So the Blender 2.8 release was probably the biggest software release this year and I recommend checking out the video if you are not up to date yet. Um, another game engine that launched this year uh, was Pixel Game Maker MV. Uh, I reviewed this, I can't believe that it is mostly positive right now because this software is, I don't know, I would use the word crap to describe it. Now it may be a little bit over strong but it's confused. The, the UI is bad. The workflow is bad. The idea is good, uh, but the execution, nah. I did a review of it and a follow-up review of it if you want to learn more about Pixel Game Maker MV, but my summary here is it's pretty indicative of my overall opinion, if I'm honest. Um, then we've got DevDog. Gave away a bunch of Unity assets open sourced. Uh, Inventory Pro, Quest Systems Pro, Line of Sight Pro, Sci-Fi UI Design, and Scene Cleaner Pro uh, were all open sourced up on GitHub. And between that and a ton of Humble Bundle stuff and Unity sales and I guess Unreal Marketplace sales and all that, if you use Unity or Unreal Engine, there are a ton of free assets for you out there. We'll get back to that a little bit for Unreal Engine in a minute. Uh, Next up, and this one is not necessarily good news, and by the way, you can still act on this one. Um, Unity prices are going up on January the 1st, 2020. Uh, so if you are a subscriber, Unity Pro is going from $125 to $150, and Unity Plus is going from $35 a month to $40 a month. But if you get it before the end of this year, um, you get it at the current pricing when you do your renewal. But yeah, so not great news there, uh, but yeah, Unity are raising their prices at the beginning of next year, and they announced this back in October. So we've got some time to be aware of it, and you've got a couple of days left to respond to it if you need to. Uh, this was another really cool one. All the way through the year, I, I had covered every single month. I think I got all of them. Epic has been giving away at least five assets uh, for that month, and then normally a couple of permanently free assets as well. Uh, it's kind of what I call Unreal Christmas. Happens, you know, the first Tuesday of every month now. And uh, yeah, they're going to do it for another year. So uh, it's, you know, going to be Unreal Christmas for at least another 10 months from now on. So that's pretty awesome. So they announced a renewal of that program. And I think that definitely made Unreal Engine developers happy. They also gave away the last of the Infinity Blade assets, uh, part of their permanently free collection. So if you are an Unreal Engine developer, it has been a good year. Um, speaking of Unreal Engine developers, and I, honestly, if, if I had to say there was a winner for the year, the, the, the group that won the most, it's a tie between Blender, because Blender just got so much support and so much better this year, or Unreal Engine. Now, don't get me wrong. Godot had a good year, developed nicely. Uh, 3.1 was a good release. 3.2 didn't quite make the year. Uh, Unity developed quite a bit. There's a ton of new features and functionality in there. The stability is a little questionable at this point in time, but they've got a whole whack of new features. But, but Unreal Engine users, they just got... They got so much so often all year long. So Unreal Engine got a whole lot better this year, but they also went out and bought Quixel. So remember back earlier in the video when I said there was an alternative sort of to Substance or after Algorithmic was bought by um, Adobe? Uh, well, Epic Games went and bought that alternative, Quixel. And unlike Adobe, who are crap, um, Epic Games are actually really cool with how they do this stuff. So first off, uh, their bridge product and mixer products are free if you are using Unreal Engine. On top of that, the Megascans library of something like 10,000 high definition textures, as long as you're using Unreal Engine, free. But the thing is, even if you aren't using Unreal Engine, if you need textures and you're using the Megascans library, they also drop the prices way down. So it, it, this is just a win-win-win all around. If you were a Quixel user or a Megascans user beforehand, uh, the world just got nicer and better because they, they decreased the pricing for what it costs you. And if you are an Unreal Engine user, it's even more amazing because now you have this huge catalog of um, uh, textures out there as well as all this software to work with it. So this announcement was pretty sweet. Uh, and again, I, I would say Unreal Engine kind of probably won this year just based off of this kind of acquisition in addition to the free monthly giveaways in addition to uh, some of the other acquisitions they made they, they uh, merged Unreal Studio in with Unreal Engine and uh, Twin Motion they purchased and they kept it free now those aren't really game development related but there were other things that happened this year been a big year for Unreal Engine um, and speaking way back to GDC um, 
Cry Engine, who uh, they had a release this year as well. They had 5.6 was released, uh, but back at GDC they announced that they had this neon noir that showed real time ray tracing uh, without um, the need for RTX cards. And they finally released it on uh, when was this? This was earlier this month or last month. I mean, so all right, that that's a really out of date. So the announcement came somewhere around. Uh, November or December. That's when they actually released it so you could download uh, the uh, Neon Noir ray tracing demo. Uh, but unfortunately, the actual ray tracing part of it, uh, the um, the part where you can do this yourself in CryEngine, that's coming in next year, unfortunately. And then I'm breaking my own rules, so I didn't cover all the Maya and Max incremental updates, but Blender ones happen less frequently and are much bigger. So what I found with Max and Maya releases, I, I almost had trouble doing news reports on them because like the one was, yeah, we added a bevel. And uh, that was kind of a, almost it in that release. So um, it, whereas the Blender updates this year have been massive. Now this one, the Blender 2.81 release uh, was all about sculpting. Sculpting got almost completely redone. Plus there's also Quadflow and Voxel remeshing support added uh, and then improvements across the board. So this was a really good year for Blender. Like I said, number two behind Unreal Engine uh, was Blender, but I, I could actually, I could argue either way. Either one was probably the most uh, interesting development this year, but I'd be curious to hear your opinion down below. And it doesn't have to be either of these two. Uh, if there's another newsmaker out there that you think was the story of the year, more so than Unreal and all the things they've done, or Blender and the development and the sponsorship it got, I'd love to hear what your opinion is in the comments down below. And then uh, to, to end the month, as of December the 16th, end of the year actually, uh, BuildBox Free was released. Now I think BuildBox Free is also BuildBox Three. Uh, I, I'm not 100% certain on it. I actually still haven't gotten around to fully checking this guy out, but I'm going to do a video soon, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but BuildBox has been in the past really expensive. There's something like three grand or something on a seat. And then it went to like $450 a year with no trial available. Well, now they finally got a, um, a pricing structure that makes sense. They've got a free version with limitations and then a monthly cost on top of that if you need more functionality. So now it's finally a good time to check out BuildBox Free. Although from the comments in my video, it sounds like a lot of you actually had a lot of trouble checking these things out. Uh, but yeah, that's it. That is 2019 in review. Uh, now, again, I, I just cherry picked some of the bigger stories of the year. If there was something huge that happened this year that I didn't cover in this roundup, I'd love to hear it in the news down below. I basically did a quick scan through through uh, the 2019 news posts across Game From Scratch. And there was something like 50 pages of things to go through. So there was a substantial amount of news, but I decided to you know really narrow it down to the highlights. And uh, if there was something glaring that I missed, I would love to hear it in the comments down below. And again, I'm really curious to hear what your news maker of the year is in your opinion. All right, that's it. I hope you guys have an excellent holiday. Uh, stay tuned. I will have some videos come up through the holidays, but I don't expect there to be a lot of news and announcements because everybody's on holiday. And uh, yeah, I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.